This is Todd Pluchak with the League Sports Rehab, and I'm here with Carrie Swark, personal trainer. And we're here going to discuss how to do a self gait analysis in about three to five minutes. So seven out of ten runners get injured every year, and that number is way too high. So what we're going to do is a simple, quick tool as you can do at home, and show you how to correct and self correct running errors and get yourself to run a lot smoother, a lot lighter, and prevent injuries. So one of the first things we use is let me. Get, Talk to my friend Slim over here. Uh, a hat. So high tech running equipment. Uh, what we're gonna do is use the hat as a tool to check out how much vertical bounce we have in our run. When we're running, the goal is to go to point A to point B as efficient as possible. So any movement up and down or left and right is inefficiency and our body has to absorb that inefficiency. It takes more energy. We wanna conserve the energy for the run. So we're gonna use the build this hat while we're running and use it to see how it sits on the horizon. We're gonna use a hat to use as a tool to figure out how much bounce we have in our gait, how much vertical movement we have in our gait. So as we're running, we're gonna view the horizon and we're gonna compare the horizon to this rim of the hat or visor, whatever you're using. As you're running, I want you to just run at a normal pace, get what's comfortable, and then look at how much that's going up and down on the horizon. At the same time, we want to try to minimize that. So see if we can get to do this and not that. If you look at these world-class runners, it looks like they're gonna have plates on their head as they're running. There's very little up and down. What we're gonna do is use a treadmill and use Carrie, she's warmed up here. And we're gonna look at a few things as she's running. First thing we're gonna do is look at the ponytail. Uh, you can't look at it yourself, but it's gonna be a good assessment. We're gonna see how much up and down she's going and how much left and right that thing's swinging, okay? Also, the next thing I want to do is really listen to yourself on the treadmill. How hard are you hitting on that treadmill? Is it hard or soft? Can you sneak up on a sleeping dog? Or are they going to hear you three blocks away pounding the concrete? So, what we're going to do is use that hat to, and our ability to listen to calm how hard we're hitting that treadmill or the surface down. Yourself, how much that bill of the hat is bouncing up. And now I want you to relax your ankles and try to minimize how much that's bouncing up. And very softly, good. You see we have less bounce here. It's a lot softer, a lot quieter. That ponytail is a great analysis, but she's using that hat. The other quick thing to do is use a piece of tape or chalk on a treadmill. And we can see how we're striking that treadmill. So Carrie, I want you to look down and look how your feet are hitting and are you stepping on that tape or not? Yeah. Okay. So you can also use a line on a sidewalk. We're here in San Diego, you can use the boardwalk and you can find out where you may be crossing over and that's that left and right zig and zag that causes impact to different parts of the leg and body versus all the way through the body. So a piece of tape and a hat is a great way to start. And I'll give you the part three, which is the most important. Now, one of the most important things for runners, which all the literature is showing, is the cadence. So is the cadence stupid? It doesn't matter the form as much, even though we spent some time on it, the biomechanics. What all the studies are showing is the cadence. The sweet spot for the cadence is 170 to 190 steps per minute. 180 seems to be the sweet spot. So how do you figure out your cadence? If you don't have a Garmin or Apple Watch that has an app, you can do some self-assessments with an app like a metronome, right? So it's usually in our music apps, but we can just click on the metronome and figure out our cadence by tapping during the run. You want to listen to that steps for a minute. So let's go ahead and show, track uh, Carrie's gait. So go ahead and let's get running and we'll track her cadence. Let's use the app and a partner or yourself and we can just hit a tap. And we can tap how many steps she's taking. And once you do that, we can get our cadence. The other way, if you don't have your app, look at 15 seconds on the treadmill, count how many steps you're taking for that 15 seconds and multiply by four. So do that three or four times, be a scientist about it so you can get a margin of error. Calculate how many steps you're taking by counting in 15 seconds as a clock or put a timer if you're running outside and then multiply by the four. Again, if we are running at a 160 and we wanna be around 170 or 180, don't bump your cadence up to 170 or 180. Body works with gradual adaptive changes. So we wanna just do maybe four to six steps per minute more. 
over the next two weeks and then gradually push it up there. So slow changes for runners, it's a repetitive movement. So you wanna give your body a chance to adapt, build and strengthen. And that's how we do our self gait analysis. We check for inefficient movement up and down, left and right. We look for our cadence and that should put you in a less chance of getting injured and a more enjoyable run. Thank you.